So now we want to build a little database to use with our project here. So while you might not have the steps memorized, uh, hopefully you're becoming more comfortable and more familiar with them with all that we've done with that. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, what should I do first? I, I, I want to prove this point that we don't need to do it necessarily in order. Um, I know I'm going to need a context file, for example. So in my data folder, I can create a context file. So a new item. Now a context file is just a CS file um, that if we're scaffolding, it takes from the database and builds our context file for us. But if we're building it ourselves, then uh, we need to type out the information. I don't think there's actually a context setup. I just was looking for one, but there isn't one. It's just a regular C sharp file. So I'm going to go ahead and add that in. But the important part about this class is that it inherits from the general DB context class. Now, when I do that, it's not going to like it. And it's going to say, I don't even know what you're talking about. Do you want to generate a class called DB context and a new file? What do you want to do? Well, notice one of the options is that you don't have the entity framework core installed. And so in order to make this work, I need to bring uh, and it even gives me the option here, find and install the latest version. I've never done it this way before. Let's try it. Okay, slick. It went and installed it for us. And uh, if I go and look at the new Git package manager, uh, I should have, and I do have the entity framework core installed. And actually, did it do more than I wanted it to? Oh, that's installed, huh? I mean, we've got a whole bunch of stuff installed, but that must be all be part of coming with the, the API. All right, so I've got to get my, my uh, DB context recognized. And then you might remember that, uh, of course, we don't want to call it public class class. I'll call it my uh, food context file. All right, so I've got my food context file. And then within this, then I need to go uh, get it set up with the constructor to bring in the options, if you'll remember. So I'm going to create a constructor here. So that's going to share the same name as the class. And in here, I'm going to set up the DB context options. And it says, well, what kind do you want? Well, it's already generating this line for me. I want food context to be the type. And we'll call this options, but we could call it whatever. Obviously, it's the name we're giving it. But it's going to inherit from the base options. And that's the part that's most important um, in that constructor. Sometimes we forget that. Uh, we're going to inherit from the base options of just a regular old uh, DB context. All right, so then from there, we say public, and then uh, we're going to create our table here. So what is our set? What we're going to get is a set of, so DB set of our Marriott food types. So again, this is Marriott food singular. We're getting a whole bunch of entries together into one group i.e. a table that we can refer to as whatever we want to. And I'll just take the defaults there and call it foods. All right, so we're going to take all these foods, uh, individual food items together and call them foods, which eventually when we run our, our uh, migration is going to create a table called foods. All right, so we've got that set up in our DB context. Are we done? No, we're not done. We have to tell it where we want this database to be. So typically we do that in our app settings.json. You'll recall we go in and put in an entry for connection strings and we can set up connections to whatever databases we're using. So we might have one database for the foods. We might have another database for security um, type stuff. And so anyway, uh, I set up the connection strings and uh, I'm gonna name it. This is my food connection, okay? And we can put it wherever we want to. I'll put it just in, again in a SQLite database. So I'm going to say data source equals, and then uh, we'll just call it our um, food Marriott food database. Okay, dot SQLite. All right. So and by the way, SQL it does go by different extensions. So we could just say DB here. I know that some people have had that question. SQLite allows either extensions of uh, .sqlite, .sqlite3, 
or .db. And so if we want to mix it up just to show you, we can do that. Then we'll put that in there. Okay, so we've got that set up. Where is it that we call this connection? Do you remember? So as you'll recall, that's going to be in our program CS file. And we come in here and we set up a service. So the service, so we say builder.services, right? Is this ringing a bell? And the service we're going to set up is to, uh, I have to remind myself, I think it's use SQL light, right? So we're going to use SQL light, which again, it's not going to recognize because we haven't installed anything to do with use SQL. Well, that's not right yet. Sorry. I just actually did look at my notes. So builders, builder services, we'll, we'll get to this SQL light in a second. Add DB context is what we do first. And then what kind of DB context are we going to use? Well, we're going to use the one we created called, where is our context file? Oh, it's named class.cs. That's not right. Rename it. That was my bad. And we called it Marriott Food, I believe. No, we didn't. We called it Food Context. What did we call it? Let's go into it. Okay, food context. These are professional videos. You will never get this kind of quality anywhere. All right. Food context is what we want that to be. The name of the class should always match the name we give here. So the name of the file, foodcontext.cs, should always match what we're doing there. Okay, I've got my bearings. Now let's get back in. Uh, to our program CS file. Okay, so program CS, we're adding a DB context of type, and the type here is going to be a food context. And then uh, we set up in that food context, we say the options for this are going to be set to, and then this is where we use our options dot use SQL light. Now, I was getting ahead of myself before because I was so excited for this error to pop up. So where we're, what we're going to set up here is the connection string. So you might remember that we say um, builder dot uh, configuration and then in square brackets we go put the connection string. So we say connection strings. We're going to look at the connection strings entry in our configuration file. And we're going to set it equal to our whatever we called it. What did we call it? Food connection. So food connection. And then uh, I think we're good on that. So no. We need to have a closing parenthesis there. Okay, so but it doesn't like this use SQL light. So if I hover over this, it's going to say I don't know what this is. And 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 if I look at the potential fix, why is it not show potential fixes? Okay, so it it is it's not even giving me anything. I don't know what it's trying to do here. Come on. Anyway, it's not going to work because that library hasn't been imported. So we need to go back to our new Git package manager and search for entity framework core entity framework framework core dot SQLite. All right, so we search for that and nothing's installed. Let's go to the browse and it finds our Microsoft Entity Framework Core SQLite. Now again, don't do the one with the core on the end. Do this one and we'll say install. All right, so that gets installed. Now when we go back to our program CS file, after a second, it changed the error Save all. All right, I am going to do something strange here. I am purposely going to go over my 10 minute mark because I want all the database stuff to be contained in the same video. Do I? No, I don't. Let's fix this error and we'll do the, the migration in the next video. Spencer out.